Good morning, Sagu. Why don't you stand up with us and get ready to worship? Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. God, I ask that your presence would just fall in this room, Lord. There is nobody like our God.
Would you just lift your hands across this room? Just reach your hands towards heaven. Lord, we thank you for your name, that your name is above all other names, God. We thank you and we praise you in this place right now. And we fix our eyes upon you, Jesus. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you, God. Amongst our peers, we thank you for the opportunity to get to lift your name. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your majesty, God. Thank you for how much you love us. And thank you, God, for sending your son for us so that way we can call upon his name, his mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you, Lord, and we just lift up the country of China today, God. We lift up those who know you, the Christians in China, God. We just pray for strength and for boldness by your Holy Spirit upon them, God. We know it's a country that is hard to get missionaries into, so God, I just pray for a boldness upon the Christians in China that they would witness to those in their own country, God. We pray for more people to get to know the name of Jesus, that we have the opportunity of worshiping in service today. We praise your name, Lord, and we lift up China to you. I just pray for a great service. May you be glorified above all else, Lord, and bless our time together today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. You may be seated. Can we give it up for the worship team this morning? Thank you for leading us into the presence of God. Well, hello, everyone. If you don't know already, my name's Allison. I'm the current Student Congress President here on campus. I have a few quick announcements for us, nothing super long. Uh, really quick announcement, Senior Brunch. Any seniors? Where are the seniors at? Seniors, we love our seniors. Senior Brunch is happening Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m. in the President's Dining Room. If you don't know where that is, it's on the second floor in this building. Uh, there will be free gifts, door prizes, food, and fellowship for our graduating seniors. You can RSVP to alumni at sagu.edu. So seniors definitely do not miss out on that. And then who's excited for class night this Friday? Woohoo! I'm excited for class night. Class night is this Friday in HCC. Um, we'll kind of hang out in the lobby space. The doors will open starting around 6. We'll have some just kind of fellowship time in the lobby, and then it will follow by um, voting for Mr. and Ms. Southwestern in the HCC auditorium. So come out. Uh, everybody's going to be dressed super nice, and it's going to be really fun. And then everybody in attendance will get a curfew pass for that evening. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. All right, and then that's all the announcements we have today. And then now I'm going to hand it off to Dr. Hayes. Can we give it up for him? <clears throat> the College of Bible and Church Ministries, um, a couple, four or five years ago, began to award annual um, academic awards to students. And um, we have been given the opportunity by student government to um, make those awards during chapel today. We're not gonna take a long time with it. Uh, we have our faculty lined up over on the other side. When I call your name, uh, would you come and join the faculty members um, that are being uh, associated with the award that you're getting? You'll see the uh, pictures of the individuals on the screen as I read them. The award for excellence in Greek studies goes to Abigail Rose Thompson. The award for excellence in Hebrew studies goes to Andrew Samuel George. The M. Paul Brooks Award for Excellence in Bible and Theology goes to Abigail Rose Thompson. The Award for Excellence in Religion and Philosophy goes to Morgan Devereaux Horan. The Leroy Bartell Award for Excellence in Biblical Studies goes to Jeffrey W. Sanders. The John W. Wyckoff Award for Excellence in Theological Studies goes to Mercy Claire Priest. <laughs> Excellence in Child and Family Studies goes to Leah Padilla. <laughs> Excellence in Child and Family Ministries goes to Abigail Tweet.
Excellence in Next Gen Ministries goes to Alana uh, Fresquez. Excellence in Youth and Student Ministries goes to T.J. Sorgenfrey. Excellence in Pastoral Leadership goes to Itmar N. Garcia Vesquez. Excellence in Preaching goes to Morgan Horan. The Kermit Bridges Award for Outstanding Leadership goes to Erica Lohr. The Dr. Delmar Ray Gwines Award for Intercultural Studies goes to Shayla England. The Criminal Justice Program Award for Consistent Academic Excellence goes to Marcus Keene. The, the Criminal Justice Program Coordinators Award goes to Emily Marie Gonzalez. The Criminal Justice Program Coordinators Award goes to Zoe Nicole Bolt. The BSW Mirror Award for Ethical, Spiritual, and Professional Standards of Excellence goes to Donsha Hampton. The Robert Mapes Award for Academic Excellence in Counseling goes to Thomas Bailey. The CMHC Alumnus Award for Excellence in the Field of Counseling goes to Jonathan Boy. The Psychology Program Coordinators Award for Academic Excellence at the undergraduate level goes to Brooklyn Davis. The, psycholo the Psychology Program Coordinators Award for Academic Excellence for the graduate level goes to Anna Flore. The award for research excellence in behavioral sciences goes to Chelsea Garner. And the William Armistead Department Chair Award for Academic Excellence goes to Angela Ferguson. Congratulations to all of the award winners. Every semester we have the opportunity to hear from some of our student preachers, and this morning uh, we have the last student's preacher of the semester. Really proud of all of our, all of those men and women that the Lord is calling and equipping uh, for, for preaching ministry and, and appreciate their efforts as they prepare for that. This morning's uh, speaker is Erica Lohr. Erica is from Newport, Arkansas, and is a graduating senior, majoring in church leadership with a specialization in children and family ministries. Erica's getting married. It's a big month coming up for her. Uh, on May the 18th, her fiance and her recently took a position as the children's pastors at Mountain Home First Assembly 
in Mountain Home, Arkansas. She's an intern at North Place Church in their kids department, serving with kids with special needs. She works in childcare and in the SAGU admissions office as an ambassador. This morning, would you welcome Erica Lohr? Thank you, Dr. Odell. I wanted to go ahead and say some thank yous to some of our amazing people here at SAGU. So first of all, worship was amazing this morning. Y'all give it up for the worship team. They always do so good taking us in, leading us in. And I wanted to give a thank you to President Bridges for this opportunity, for Stu Co, my good friend Allison, and for Professor Odell for giving me this opportunity. Another shout out that I just could not do today without is Professor Dr. Doherty. I, he has really molded my experience here at SAGU and I cannot thank you enough for everything that you've done, everything that you've taught me. It's been, I've had an amazing three years here and I have Professor Doherty to thank for a lot of that. I also wanted to thank my amazing fiance Dylan. He couldn't be here today because he has an event this week that he's preparing for, but he is amazing and I know he's watching online. So. Shout out, thank you so much for being patient with me with all the wedding planning. Um, I wanted to also give a shout out to our church staff, MH1AG Mountain Home First Assembly in Arkansas, and to my wonderful family here on the front row. My mom, dad, and sister made it out today, and it's like an eight hour drive for them to be here. So y'all give it up for my family for being here. I really appreciate them and all their support. I couldn't be here without y'all. And to some people who have shaped my experience here at SAGU, Ashlyn, my amazing roommate, I, she gave me a shout out last semester too, so I had to return the favor. And I just, I'm so thankful for you and your friendship. And you're like a little sister I never had. So thank you so much for being that to me. And Keen, we met like our first week here on campus and our friendship, well, we've seen a lot. So <laughs> thank you for sticking with me through it all. And Adri, She's been one of my closest friends for a few years now, and I just thank the Lord for her. She's amazing, and she's one of my de nearest and dearest friends. And now that we got all that out of the way, thank you to everybody for being here today. Today we're going to go ahead and talk about being led by the Spirit. So I know that being led by the Spirit can kind of have this stigma around it because we always, we hear about being led by the Spirit. I know me personally, I grew up in church, I always heard about being led by the Spirit. And I was like, oh, that's for like the super spiritual people. That's just, that's for the pastors, that's for, you know, that's for the ministry majors, that's for the preachers, that's for, you know, everybody else but me. Like I always thought, I heard people talking about it and I thought, I don't know enough, like I'm not good enough to be talking about that. I'm not good enough to be led by the Spirit. I don't know enough. I don't, I don't know scripture enough, whatever the case may be. But we're gonna go ahead and start laying the foundation, first of all, of who the Holy Spirit is, just so we can have the understanding. So first off, the Holy Spirit is God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And therefore, the Holy Spirit shares characteristics with God, being eternal, meaning that he lasts forever, he is omnipotent, meaning that he is all-powerful, has all the power. He's omnipresent. That means that the same Holy Spirit that we experience just here today in worship, the same Holy Spirit that we can experience in chapel, can be experienced all the way across the world. He's omnipresent. He's all-present everywhere at all times. And omniscient, which is all-knowing. And this one's the one that really gets me because it's so crazy how I can be sitting in class, I can be sitting at a coffee shop looking across the table at a random stranger and God will give me a word of knowledge about that person because the Holy Spirit is all knowing. They know, the Holy Spirit knows everything. Now, just like God the Father and Jesus in scripture, we see that they go by different names. We sing the songs about their different names and the Holy Spirit also goes by different names in scripture. He's the eternal spirit in Hebrews 9.14, spirit of truth in John 14.17, spirit of promise in Ephesians 1.13, the Holy Spirit in John 14.26, the helper and comforter in John 14.26 and 27, the spirit of holiness in Romans 1.4, and the spirit of Christ and the spirit of life in Romans 8.2, he's the spirit of God in Romans 8.14. 
Now we hear a lot of different tangible representations of the Holy Spirit in scripture. You hear him represented as fire, water, oil, what have you. And the Holy Spirit is represented as a dove at Jesus' baptism. In Luke 3, 22, it says the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove. He's represented as water, the living water in John 7, 37, because water quenches, the living water quenches our spiritual thirst. It cleanses us and it brings life. Also represented as fire, Isaiah 4, 4, because fire purifies anything that goes in it, just like the Holy Spirit purifies us because the Holy Spirit is living in us. And he's represented as wind in Acts 2, 2. There's a mighty rushing wind on the day of Pentecost. And also oil is the anointing of God. In 1 Samuel 16, 13, the Holy Spirit is represented as oil. Now, the Holy Spirit is in you at salvation. So this is what it means to be led by the Spirit is using the gift that you already have in you to be led and to be open and receptive to how the Holy Spirit is leading you. Maybe it's in the big things. Maybe it's in the big life decisions. Maybe it's what job am I going to take? What relationship am I going to encourage? And maybe it's the small things. Maybe it's everyday things like, am I going to pay my tithes this week? Am I going to go here? Am I going to entertain this friendship? And it's all kinds of just letting the Holy Spirit guide you in the big things and in the small things. So now that we've laid the foundation for understanding who the Holy Spirit is, we read in Romans 8, 1 that, I like to have my physical Bible, y'all don't mind me. So in Romans 8, 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So the first thing we read here is that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So you know what that tells me? First thing we learn about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit does not bring condemnation. The Holy Spirit does bring conviction. Now, the difference between condemnation and conviction is that grace abounds. So I was having a conversation with a mentor of mine whenever I was writing this message, and we were just talking about the difference between condemnation and conviction and just the beauty of that, the way that we've experienced that in our own lives, and the Difference, the neat, one of the neat things about this difference is that condemnation, it focuses on the problem. It says, here's where you messed up. Here's where you fell short. Here's where you sinned. You're never going to recover. Give up. Give in. It's over. There's no hope. And conviction, on the other hand, is full of grace. Conviction brings forth an answer. It leads you to change something. It focuses on the fact that there is a better way of doing things, and it gives you the room, it gives you the space, it gives you the love to get back up. And that's why our God, our God of love, brings conviction and not condemnation. See, conviction rings the bell that there's something going on. Conviction will tell you that there's, it'll ring the bell and it'll tell you that there's something wrong, and it will steer you towards what's right. It'll impulse not only confession, but also repentance to our loving God. Now, with this in mind, I heard a quote from Pastor Brian Jarrett, and uh, just kind of thinking on the topic of conviction and condemnation, uh, he says that having a good psychology starts with having a good theology. And this one really hit me because if you see God as a mad God, as a condemning God, as a God who's just ready to smite you the second you mess up and leave you down, then you're like, who wants to serve that kind of God? But if you know that you serve a lovingly convicting God who's going to tell you, hey, this happened, let's pick it back up, let's start over again, that's the kind of God I want to serve. I don't know about y'all, but what is your theology of God? Do you serve a mad God, or do you serve a God who takes joy in knowing you? Do you serve a condemning God, or do you serve a convicting God? Do you serve a mean God, or do you serve a loving God? Now, 
The way that we view God and our relationship with God stems a lot from our relationship with our parents. And in thinking about this and just the difference between conviction and condemnation, I think of the rules that my parents set for us whenever we were younger. Now, they had rules for us, and they usually were along the lines of keeping us from A, doing something stupid and hurting ourselves, B, doing something stupid and hurting somebody else or disrespecting somebody else, and C, just to bring us up to do better. They wanted us to be better. And I hated these rules a lot of times. I was the youngest, I'm not gonna lie. I probably broke the most rules in my house and probably got away with the most of them. Sorry, sis. Uh, (laughs) But I did not always take so kindly to these rules. And God gives us commandments in his word. He gives us the 10 commandments, which are the basic layout of behavior for how to treat God and how to treat other people. And he says, don't make idols or put anything before me. Don't take my name in vain. Don't compromise your Sabbath. Don't dishonor your parents. Don't kill folks. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't tell lies. Don't covet or envy others. And God gives us these commandments because... A, he doesn't want us to do something stupid and hurt ourselves. B, he doesn't want us to do something stupid and hurt or dishonor somebody else. And C, he is calling us higher. He's calling us to do better. And Ephesians 4.24 tells us that we are to put on the new self created in the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So knowing that we are to put on the new self at salvation, why would we not want to follow these commandments that God has lovingly laid out for us to keep, us, to keep us from harm, to keep us from hurting others. And all this to say that if you just see God as a judgmental, as a mad and condemning God, how are you ever going to see yourself as forgiven, as joyful, and as growing as a child of God? There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's really hard to see yourself on the other side of forgiveness when you don't believe that you're serving a forgiving God who set you free. Now, when Jesus left earth, he said, it's better that I go, y'all, because I am sending the Holy Spirit to come and fill you. That's the ESV, Erica Standard Version. Now, the Holy Spirit leads us, but to know how the Holy Spirit will lead you, you need to understand how the Holy Spirit won't lead you because scripture lays out both for us. Now in Galatians 5, verses 16 and 17, scripture says, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you wanna do. Because the things that we wanna do don't always line up with what God wants to do. And that's why we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Now we go down to verse 22, and it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Now let's put that in our back pocket because we want to be fruitful, but to be fruitful, we first have to understand how to be led. We first have to be receptive to be led. If you're not receptive, how are you going to be led? Now, this reminds me of uh, whenever I was at my grandmother's house growing up. She had an oil lamp and a comically large flashlight beside her bed at all times. And I asked, Grandma, why do, you have, why do you have this big old flashlight and this big old oil lamp by your bed? Well, in case the power goes out. In case the power goes out. She always had these things, in case the power goes out. And now Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I have some, uh, I forgot them over here the illustration pieces. But I asked security actually for a flashlight to use for this, a large flashlight, and boy, did they provide. Look at this thing. Y'all see that? 
and light up the whole room. So this scripture says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, this is kind of a comically large flashlight, but a lot of times we read that and we want God's word to be a light to our path all the time. We always want it to be lit up. We want God to say, oh, here's your next, here's this job opportunity. Here's where you're going to be in the next year. Here's your next relationship. Here, here's your future husband or wife. Here is where you're going to be in the next 10 years. But we have to take God's word for the fullness of what it says. Let me not blind y'all. We have to take God's word for the fullness of what it says and not just leave it at that. Because we usually expect God to light our paths. And we get disappointed and discouraged when he doesn't. We'll pray all these prayers. God, show me where I'm going to be in 10 years. Show me what my job opportunity is going to be. Show me what's after graduation. Where's my graduating seniors? Hey, it's crazy out here. And we always want to see what's in the next chapter. We want to read the rest of the book. Who am I kidding? And that's not always how it works. Because this verse also says that his word is a lamp into our feet. And now, I really wanted to get my grandma's oil lamp, but I just had to go yesterday and get this one from the uh, antique store downtown. But this will work. So this, if anybody's never seen one of these before, is an oil lamp. And you put oil in it, and you light the wick. And whenever this is lit up, I don't think President Bridges would uh, appreciate me lighting a fire in chapel today. But whenever this is lit up, it lights just about immediately what's around you. You can see the next step that you're going to take, and that's about it. So we're praying, God, show me the next chapter. Show me the next step. Be a light unto my path. And God's trying to be a lamp unto your feet for the, what's next. Now, we want to be fruitful, but we have to understand how to be led. So we're talking about the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But God's showing us one step at a time as a lamp into our feet. How to love people who don't think the same as us. How to love people when we disagree with them. How to have joy when our assignments, we're six assignments behind and we're out of chapel skips, so we have to be here in chapel today. Thank y'all for being here. He gives us peace that passes all understanding when we're having sleepless nights. We don't know what to do. He gives us peace. He gives us joy, or he gives us patience when we serve in kids' ministry. He gives us patience, I'll tell you. He gives us kindness, to be kind to those who may have not been kind to you first. There's kindness. He gives us goodness. Because let me tell you, good works won't get you into heaven, but they will reflect the goodness of God in your life right now. He gives us faithfulness to be faithful to God and to be faithful to his word, to be faithful to what we believe even when it gets hard. And he gives us self-control to resist temptations. So we want God to be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path because there is beauty in the small steps. There is beauty in being led step by step and being led by God. Now, it's not always tulips and roses to be led by the Holy Spirit. We talk about Jesus himself was led into the wilderness, and he is proof that we can overcome the enemy by the power of the Holy Spirit when we are being led by the Holy Spirit. Jesus overcame, and he showed us that we, too, can overcome if we allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, if we are giving the Holy Spirit, if we are surrendering to that guidance. Now, the Holy Spirit will lead you to be fruitful. Galatians 5.25 says, if we keep in step with the Spirit. So, what does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit? Being led by the Holy Spirit is growing and learning from your convictions and not your condemnation. Maybe today you're over here and you're saying, the enemy has beat me down and I just, he's told me I can't get up. I can't, every time I try to get back up, it takes me back down again and I just can't do it. I just, I've got so much going on. Like I don't have time to focus on this and you're just feeling beat down and feel like you can't get back up. 
And maybe you're over here and you're learning from your convictions and maybe you're understanding the difference and you're being led by the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you to keep going. And being led by the Spirit is also knowing and discerning how the Holy Spirit will and will not lead you. And this takes knowing the Word of God and knowing the Spirit of God. Not like this, not like this, but knowing them together. You have to know both who the, you have to know both who the person of the Holy Spirit is and you have to know the Word of God on the same level to understand how the Holy Spirit will lead you because it's right there in His Word. A lot of the questions that we ask, a lot of the anxieties that we face, a lot of the fears that we have, a lot of the issues that we face in everyday life, they're right there in the Word. I can't tell you how many times I've been like, God, you, there's no way you have an answer for this. There is no way. This is a 21st century girl's girl problem, and there is no way that you have an answer for this. And I open it up. It's right there. I promise you, it's right there. And being led by the Spirit is also walking in step with the Spirit. Not walking ahead, not making your own pathway, not budging the door open when the Holy Spirit's trying to close it. I've been there. Let's be real. We've all been there. So from the time that you stepped into relationship with Jesus, you have been led by the Spirit. Whether you realize it or not, you were drawn by the Holy Spirit. Maybe you received Jesus in an altar call. Maybe you received Jesus in your bedroom. Maybe you received Jesus at a church service. But you have been led by the Holy Spirit from the time that you responded. Your sin was revealed, and you felt that conviction for the first time. That was the Holy Spirit. You were led by the Holy Spirit to admit that you are a sinner in need of salvation. You were led by the Holy Spirit to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he died for your sins. And you were led by the Holy Spirit to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. Now the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that, that just puts it into perspective. The same Spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is living inside of you. And now he's convicting you, he's drawing you, he's revealing things in your life, and he's leading you, and he's convicting you today. Now, I am a big procrastinator. I know I'm talking to a bunch of college students, so y'all can relate. But I will look at an assignment and say, oh, it's not due until April 10th. So I'll do it April 10th, 11.30. Let's do it at 11.59. 11.30 should give me enough time. And so when it, sometimes we can have this procrastination mindset and then the Holy Spirit will convict us of something and we'll say, oh, yeah, I really need to deal with that issue. That's, that's a deep heart issue. So I'm going to put that on the back burner. Like, let me get through this semester. Let me get past this big project. Let me get past this season of life. And then I'll deal with that. Let me set that aside for right now. And maybe you're being convicted and that's something that you need to address right now. That's something you need to address today. Maybe there are open doors that the Holy Spirit is trying to lead you through that you need to be able to pick yourself up where you felt beat down. Maybe you need to pick yourself up from where the enemy has discouraged you, from where people around you have discouraged you, and you need to say, I know this is where the Spirit is leading me, and you need to follow in that way. Maybe there's a door that you're trying to pry open that the Holy Spirit is trying to close that you just, you just need to let that close. Because I promise you, that door that you're trying to open, he has so much, so much more in store for you. He has so many better things, and you just need to, you just need to cut that out. I'll be so real with you. As Christians, we might find it hard to be led by the Spirit because we have not fully surrendered. We have not fully, we've told ourselves that we fully surrender. We told our friends, we're here at Bible college. Of course, we're fully surrendered to God. Why else would we be here? But that's a decision that you make deep down in your heart to fully surrender every aspect, not compartmentalize, not say, okay, God, I'll give you control over my ministry, or I'll let you lead me in what job I choose, or I'll let you lead me in my relationships, or I'll let you lead me in where I need to move to after graduation. But God wants all that. He doesn't want just a compartmentalization and say like, oh, a little bit of Holy Spirit here, a little bit of Holy Spirit there. You're either led by the Spirit or you're not. So I encourage you today to surrender yourself and decide, am I really 
being led by the Holy Spirit or am I just telling myself? Am I just telling others? Am I just walking the walk and talking the talk because that's what everybody else around me is doing? And deep down, I don't really feel like I'm surrendered. Now, we just need to live fully surrendered and fully yielded to the Holy Spirit, especially in this time. Like we are in college. It is a pivotal time in our lives. We can choose, you know, we leave here and we choose where to live, what job to do, what maybe what relationships we're going to have after college. We choose all kinds of things right here in this little like four year section of life. We're making so many decisions and I personally want to be led by the Holy Spirit in all those decisions. I don't know about you, but I want to be led by the Holy Spirit in everything that I do. So now I want to go ahead and open up the altars. If there's anybody here who just feels like maybe you haven't fully surrendered, maybe you're being convicted today and there's something that was said or something that the Holy Spirit revealed to you today that you're saying, yeah, I, I haven't laid that down or I've been discontent or I've been disappointed because God hasn't lit up the whole path and I need to learn to walk one step at a time and have his word be a lamp into my feet. Maybe you are trying to budge open the door that the Holy Spirit's trying to close. I just wanna encourage you today to surrender to the Holy Spirit and what he's trying to do in your life. So if you'd stand with me, like I said, the altars are open. If you'd like to pray here today or at your seat, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help us to fully surrender to you. I pray that you would help us to learn and to grow from our convictions. I pray that you would help us to get back up, Lord, to receive your grace and mercy in areas that we've fallen short. I pray that you would help us to know both the word of God and the person of the Holy Spirit on the same level, to know how you will and how you will not lead us. And I pray that you would help us to fully surrender every part of our lives today and to walk in step just as scripture instructs us in Jesus name amen how many of you knew it was going to be a little bit more serious when she opened up that bible amen and use the word smite, right? Hey, listen, it takes a certain giftedness to be that sweet and have a smile like that while dropping some truth bombs, right? I think she's dead on. This is a great timing at this. The Lord could not have orchestrated that more beautifully, amen? Here we are, where we got a week and a half left the chapels and classes before finals week, and anybody feeling that? Maybe a little stress, maybe a little anxiety. Maybe you've affected others with that a little bit, rubbing that off, not in such a good way. I think it'd be really important that we pray for one another. That we just take a moment to ask the Lord to help us, as Erica was mentioning, with the being led by the Spirit to be using the fruits of the Spirit. So reflect on that just a moment. That, you know what, Lord, I need more self-control. I need more patience. How many of you need more kind in this season of your life right now? And maybe use that as a gift. Can you lift your heart with your hands? Let's just close in prayer this way. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this word that Erica has preciously and meticulously given us. Thank you for speaking that word through her to us. Pray right now for the sharpening of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us to just a healthy pathway, Father. Not just for the rest of this semester on through finals, but through this summer and on through our lives. God, help us use, use wisdom in our speech and how we, how we present the gospel and be the gospel to other people. God, I pray right now for, for a calming of nerves, for us to be kind, patient, loving towards one another as we uh, take this journey of life. Thank you for the leading of your Holy Spirit, Lord. God, we thank you for this chapel service and for the rest of this semester. Be with us. Strengthen and encourage and Father, be with us as we uh, journey uh, this summer and to on, whether that's graduating seniors or whether that's uh, internships or whatever you have for us that will be unfolded before our eyes. And help us be patient with you and the journey you're placing us on. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Can we give a big thank you to Erica this morning? We're so appreciative. God bless you guys. Have a great day.